Okay, so I've said this plenty of times before. I think as guitar players, we live in the golden age of gear. It's never been a better time to be a guitar player. There are so many different options out there for players of all different styles and genres and skill levels and needs. And this year we saw a lot of really great gear come on to the scene. From new pedals to modelers to amps and guitars. I mean, there's so many great pieces of gear that hit the market in 2019. So in this week's video, we're gonna talk about my 10 favorite pieces of gear from 2019. This is all stuff that is a working, touring musician. I was really excited to see come on the scene, stuff that's incredibly useful, that makes my life as a guitar player easier, and some new things that came on the market this year that I'm excited to see develop in the near future. So without further ado, let's jump into the list. If you haven't done so already though, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon down below to be notified when I'm going live and posting new videos here on the channel every week. And if you want more information about the gear I'm talking about. It'll all be linked in the description box down below. Some of those links will be Amazon affiliate links. So if you buy through one of those links, I get a small commission, which really helps me out in making these videos. So I've compiled this list from the perspective of a working musician, a working guitar player. So everything on this list is something that I would gig with and use in the real world. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at the 10 best pieces of gear from 2019. So starting with number 10, the Kemper Stage. Now, if you've been around the channel for a while, you know I'm a Kemper user. I've had a Kemper rack for years and I've used it on tour, I've used it on sessions, and I've used it for plenty of videos here on the channel. But there are some shortcomings that the Kemper rack and the toaster version have that the stage fixed, namely, putting the entire unit in one box. So you don't have to have the head and the remote cable and the remote to use the thing live. Now you have everything on the stage in front of you, much like a Helix. Now I'm a big fan of the Kemper, even though it is at this point a little outdated. And I think that's something hopefully we will see at NAMM in a few weeks is a new Kemper. Number nine on the list is our first pedal of several on this list, and that is the Nile compressor from Vertex FX. Now, I'm not a compressor guy. I don't have one on my board. I'm not a fan of the always on compressor thing. I actually think it's more of a crutch for players than anything else. But I actually really like this compressor. And it's more than just a compressor, it's also a preamp circuit as well. Now, if you don't know, Nile refers to Nile Rodgers, one of the most famous producers and guitar players of the last 50 years. And so much of Nile's guitar sound was direct into the console. A lot of those famous funk and disco records, those famous guitar lines were recorded DI, and this pedal is meant to emulate that tone. So you have a preamp circuit on one side that allows you to get some natural grit and overdrive, and then you have the compressor on the other side, which is modeled after an 1176 style compressor, really great compressor circuit for guitars and bass. And what you get is a really versatile pedal. It can be an overdrive, it can be a clean boost, it can be a compressor. All in all, this is a workhorse pedal. It's extremely versatile, it sounds great, and it works well with some of the other gear that we're gonna talk about on the list. Number eight on the list is a utilitarian piece of gear for all of you players out there that are using things like the HX Stomp, the Strymon Iridium, or just using your pedal board to go DI. And that is the DISO Plus, or the DISO Plus, or the DI So Plus. I'm not exactly sure how you say it. But this is from Pinstripe Pedals, and essentially this is a DI that's designed for guitar players to use with things like the HX Stomp. Essentially what it allows you to do is take quarter inch in, stereo left and right from your HX Stomp, and split it out to XLR outputs that you would then send to front of house or an interface recording console, or you can split it out quarter inch as well. It'll allow you to run stereo or some to mono, it's a really useful box to have, especially if you are an HX Stomp user or Strymon Iridium user. Most recently, I used it on the channel with the Tone Master Deluxe Reverb to essentially make a poor man's wet, dry, wet rig. I 
I took the DI out of the Tone Master into a few stereo effects, some reverb, some delay, and then ran those into the DISO or the DISO, however you say this, and then used this to run stereo XLR out into my recording software, and it sounded really good. All in all, if you are gigging with an HX Stomp or Strymon Iridium, I would definitely recommend taking a look at the DISO Plus or the DISO Plus or the DISO Plus or the this thing. Coming in at number seven on the list is the Origin Effects Revival Drive Compact. Now the big brother to this pedal, the Revival Drive, has been on the market for a few years now and that is an incredibly useful pedal. But it has a couple of downsides. Namely, it's pretty complicated, it's pretty big, and it's pretty pricey for an overdrive preamp style pedal. But I think they were smart to release the compact version. It's much simpler to use, it's more pedal board friendly, and it's easier on your wallet than its big brother. But it retains the feel and the tone that the big revival drive has, and that's the reason this is on the list. It also plays nicely with the amps back here on the rack. It's just a really versatile workhorse overdrive that I would recommend pretty much any guitar player check out if you are looking for something like this. Number six on the list is a piece of gear that I actually don't own. It's the Sur Reactive Load IR. Now this makes the list because this is another one of those pieces of gear that I was really excited to see come out because it really starts to bridge the gap between the traditional analog tube amps and the digital realm that so many players and engineers and companies are starting to switch to. Basically, it sits on top of your amp and it allows you to run your traditional tube amp completely silently with no cab, if you want, and utilize impulse responses rather than having to mic up the cabinet. This is fantastic for live use, for home studio use if you don't have access to a ton of great mics. It's also a really great practice tool. You can plug headphones into it and practice silently while using your tube amp. And that's great for guitar players who might be in an apartment or in a home or near other neighbors where you can't crank your 37 watt divided by 13, but you wanna prepare for a gig where you're gonna be using that amp. This allows you to set up your sounds with the actual amp that you're gonna be using and dial in your tones ahead of time completely silently. So the Sur Reactive Load IR. It's definitely gonna be on my list of gear to pick up for 2020. Number five on the list is a piece of gear that I bought a couple of months ago and it's one of the best purchases I've made in recent memory and that is the Tone King Iron Man 2 Mini Attenuator. Now, if you don't know, an attenuator is a device that allows you to turn down the output volume of almost any tube amp. You insert it in between the amplifier and the speaker cabinet, and it uses a reactive load, in this case, to bleed off some of the volume. Now, for me, this is extremely useful because one of my main gigging amps is the FTR37 from Divided by 13, and that amp is insanely loud. Even on the biggest stages, that amp will overpower just about any other instrument on stage. So having the attenuation capabilities and being able to turn the amp down a couple of notches is extremely useful. And because this is a reactive load, it does a really good job of maintaining the natural feel and response of the amp when it's unattenuated. But that's actually not my favorite thing about this attenuator. This has a DI out on the back which means you can essentially do the same thing that the Sur Reactive Load IR did, being able to run your amplifier into an IR loader like the Cabzeus from GFI or any other third-party IR loader. You could even run it into your software and use some of the cab models in something like Logic, for example. The other great thing is it has a solo boost built in. So let's say I'm attenuating at minus 11 dB and I hit this button, it's gonna kick it up to minus eight, allowing you to step down the attenuation and push forward in the mix for a solo or lead line, something like that. Now this is the Iron Man 2 Mini. It's only designed for amps, I think up to 30 watts. They have a bigger version, which is for amps up to 100 watts. But for me, this was perfect. One of the best purchases I've made in a long time. Now, number four on the list is interesting because I don't own it and I've actually never played it, 
but it's making the list because it's a really exciting piece of gear and I think it's an indication of where the industry is headed and I think it's a really good thing. That's the Rev D20 guitar amp. Now, if you're not familiar, the Rev D20 is a true hybrid amp. It is full tube with a 6v6 power section, but it's got cabinet emulation software from Two Notes, who are some of the best in the game when it comes to cab emulation and impulse responses. And that allows you to run the amp completely standalone by itself. You can go direct into a PA or into a recording software, much like we just talked about with the reactive load IR from Sir and the Iron Man 2 Mini. Now this thing has a ton of features that we're not gonna get into in this video. And again, since I haven't actually spent any time with it, I can't tell you what works well and what doesn't. But from the stuff that I've seen online, I'll actually have a couple of videos posted down below. Uh, my buddy RJ Ronquillo made a great demo video down below. That whole sentence basically just rhymed. Having all those features makes it really appealing for working guitar players. It looks like it would fit well in just about any gigging situation or studio situation you might find yourself in. Now, much like the reactive load IR, the Rev D20 is on my list of gear to get my hands on for this coming year. But for now, it comes in at number four on the list. So number three on the list is the Tone Master Deluxe Reverb from Fender. Now, I just put up a video about this amp, which you can check out here. But this was one piece of gear that I was not expecting to like at all all this year. When they first came out with it, I completely blew it off and didn't think twice about it until they sent me one to check out and it changed my mind really quickly. Now, in a similar way to the Rev D20, I also think this is a smart move for amp manufacturers to make. Taking a great tube amp like the Deluxe Reverb, something that's been on the scene for decades. People know that amp. It's reliable. People trust it. And updating it for the 21st century, making it solid state, giving it some good features like being able to run DI as well as attenuation and being able to run at basically any stage volume that you would need, all while making it sound extremely close to the original amp. I said in that review video that if I were in the market for buying a deluxe reverb today, as a working player, I would probably buy the Tone Master over the Tube Deluxe. And that stirred up some controversy in the comments section, but I still stand by that. Number two on the list of best gear in 2019 is the Fractal Audio Axe Effects now, I've currently got an Axe FX3 on loan from Fractal Audio to check out, and I've been spending some time with it over the last eight weeks or so. The reality is I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of what this thing is capable of, and that's why I haven't made a video on it yet. I really want to understand the ins and outs of this thing before I share my opinion and thoughts on it. That being said, this thing is the Cadillac of modelers. It has so many features. I mean, it's unbelievable the amount of detail you can get into in tweaking the sounds of each amp. In the reality, it's almost too much. There's almost too much going on. But once you learn some of the fundamentals and you learn where to look, which I had help from a former Axe FX2 owner, friend of mine, Ben Forehand, he was able to kind of show me the ropes. Once you learn that stuff, it becomes incredibly useful. The built-in effects are insanely good. The reverbs, the delays, the overdrives are as good as anything else on the market today. The number of cab models and impulse responses is astounding. I mean, it's again, overwhelming how many options there are. So I'm going to spend some more time with it, but there will be a video coming early next year. So before we get to number one on the list, a couple of honorable mentions. First off, the Power Cab 212 from Line 6. This debuted at Summer NAM this past July in Nashville, and I was able to get my hands on one shortly after. And if you're in the market for a powered cabinet to run with your modeler, your Kemper, your Helix, your Axe FX3, I think this is probably the best one on the market. It's a true stereo 212 cabinet with built-in speaker and microphone modeling from Line 6, but you also have the ability to load your own third-party impulse responses. It's insanely loud. Honestly, it's almost 
you can make it too loud for just about any stage. But the good news is it'll keep up with any drummer on any stage. And the last honorable mention is the Greer Soma 63 Vintage Preamp Pedal. Now, I don't have one of these. I want to get my hands on one pretty soon for a video idea, a signal flow video. But they dropped this at Winter Nam last year, and it actually won Best in Show at Winter Nam. And I got to play one both at Winter Nam and Summer Nam, and it's really, really cool. Basically, it's a vintage preamp style pedal, which will allow you to get overdrive, fuzz tones, amp in a box type tones. It's the kind of pedal that would work well with a cab sim or IR loader pedal if you wanted to do that and run direct with your pedal board. I'm a huge fan of basically everything Nick Greer does, so I'm excited to get my hands on a Soma 63 in the near future. So finally, number one, the best piece of gear in 2019, in my opinion, the Strymon Iridium. Strymon dropped this a few months ago and it's been pretty hot ever since. I made a video review of this pedal, which you can check out here. This makes number one on the list because this is probably the most versatile piece of gear to come out in 2019. The amp models sound fantastic. The ability to load your own impulse responses is really useful. You can also disable the impulse responses and use it as an amp in a box overdrive into a traditional tube amp. This thing goes with me now on every gig and every time I'm traveling, it just goes in the guitar case. And I actually used it on tour a couple weeks ago in the Netherlands. We had an in-studio radio performance that we did and this was my amp. I plugged my pedal board directly directly into this thing and sent it stereo out onto the Dutch airwaves and it sounded fantastic. In fact, there's actually a video of the performance that I'll link down below where you can hear how this thing sounds in a real world context. Now the Iridium's not perfect. I think there are some improvements that could be made on it. And I mentioned those in the video review that I did, but I actually think that this is just a precursor. I think this was a proof of concept for Strymon. I think they really are trying to showcase the modeling technology that they developed. And soon, possibly at Winter Nam, I don't know, but possibly at Winter Nam, we're gonna see a bigger, better, faster, stronger version of the Iridium. And I think, that's incredibly exciting for us guitar players. So that's my list, top 10 pieces of gear in 2019. What did you think about it? What did I miss? What did I get wrong? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, I just released some new merch designs, some of which are a very limited run. You can find those in the description box down below, where you can also find links to my Helix presets and Kemper profiles. I'm about to release a new HX Stomp preset pack, so be on the lookout for that. Also, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon down below to be notified when I'm posting new videos and going live every week and happy new year everybody have a good new year's eve have a safe new year and i will see you all in 2020 thank you so much for this past year it's been incredible to see everyone here coming to the channel and subscribing and watching the videos and commenting it's been amazing. I've got some fun plans for 2020 here on the channel, some new ideas and some new content that I want to put out both here and on the podcast. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for an amazing year. Thank you for all the support. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys in 2020.